This mess was just dumped here in this beautiful San Diego neighborhood. We're gonna figure out how to get this out of here and how to keep it from happening where you live. Rent across the county, skyrocketing some places worse than others. We'll tell you where it's going up the most. A new app to deter wrongway drivers, how it works. Does filing an extension on your taxes increase your chances for an audit? We verify. The County of San Diego's Climate Action Plan and how it will affect climate change. And if you're heading to the beach with your family this summer, lifeguards have a cliff collapse warning you need to hear. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. Plans for this year's San Diego Fair are moving forward tonight thanks to a pause in a legal battle. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. We just learned late today that the fair, the vendors and a judge have all reached an agreement so the fair won't have to be scaled back or canceled. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan is in our newsroom breaking down the details of the deal. Jesse. Carlo Marcello, attorneys for the company suing the fair's organizers say they spent all weekend in court and in contact working out a plan. They've agreed to put the lawsuit on hold so you can go to the fair without a hitch. And new at six, fair organizers say they are pleased with this deal. There will be a full carnival. That's the latest decision after a weekend of deliberation between the San Diego County Fair's organizers and Tally Amusements, the company suing them. The parties agreed that it didn't make a lot of sense to be battling in court while we're also trying to work together to put on a fair. Tally Amusements, a company that bid to be the operator of this year's rides, games and more at the fair, claims the 22nd District Agricultural Association is corrupt and played favorites in picking the carnival operator, RCS. Earlier this month, a judge issued an injunction essentially canceling the district's contract with RCS. After a weekend of negotiations, a judge now ruled the fair can go on with a combination of vendors, including Tally and RCS. They're going to go out and have just as much fun as they've ever had at this year's fair. They will see everything they've seen there in fairs past. In a statement, fair organizers say in part, quote, the resolution is consistent with prior independent midways held at the fair and addresses the issues raised by the court's recent injunction ruling. Discussions will continue over the next week concerning the midway layout plan. Now, this deal means that the fair runs from June 8th through the 4th of July this year. But once it ends, the court hearings will start again to resolve the lawsuit between Tally and the fair's organizers. Thanks so much, Jesse. Tonight, one man's trash is another man's problem. And that problem was just dumped into a local neighborhood. Tonight, we're working for you. CBS 8's Anna Laurel went to that neighborhood to check out the mess for herself and to see how we can help. I'm out here in the beautiful Rancho Penasquitos neighborhood. It's gorgeous out here. Well, except for this, neighbors say it was just dumped out here. And we found out today there are things you can do to get stuff like this out of your neighborhood and to keep it from happening in the first place. That's a lot of trash. Mike just Meltzer moved to San Diego from New York. He wasn't happy when he saw this pile of brick pavers, concrete and trash dumped just above his neighbor's backyards and right across from beautiful Hilltop Park. I thought it was kind of disgusting that somebody would think it's okay to do that in a neighborhood like this. These homes are all over a million dollars. Oh yeah. Well over a million dollars. We're looking at the ocean right now. Mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> yeah, great school right here. Beautiful park and then, you know, trash. If you see something like this, file a complaint on the city's Get It Done app. They should probably get somebody out here to clean that up. I don't know, today, maybe three hours. Unfortunately, the app says it takes nearly 27 days to clean up illegal dumping. So I called City Council member Marnie Von Wilpert, who represents this area. Her staff is looking into it. I think that um, it will encourage people to come hang out here late at night and, you know, do what they're not supposed to be doing. I also spoke with a San Diego police officer. He says if you see someone dumping out anything on the side of the road, call 911. It's a misdemeanor and they can get fined. And this weekend, you can take everything to free dumping events around San Diego. I saw what it did to the Bronx. I'm not looking to have it uh, do the same to the neighborhood here. We have a link with all the details for this weekend's free dumping events on our website at CBS8.com. And we will keep working for you at CBS8. I'm Anna Laurel. Thank you, Anna. And don't forget, here at CBS 8, we are working for you. If you have a story that you'd like us to look into, just email us at yourstories at cbs8.com.
If you're looking for a place to rent tonight, you know that you're facing skyrocketing prices and aggressive competition. You know all too well that paradise comes at a price. Rents are up with huge jumps over the last year, and as CBS 8 Steve Price explains, things are getting worse. We're paying more for gas, we're paying more for food, and a new study confirms we're paying more for rent too. The smallest apartments out there across the county, studios are up 21% from the same time last year. It's, it's insane, it's crazy. Property manager Brittany Brown says not only are rents going up across the county, but some units are getting 50 offers the first day. There's a property right now in Solana Beach that the tenants are moving out, we're raising it $500 a month, and I have people offering to send me lunch, to buy my dog a toy, to buy other dogs of the company a toy, come to the, whatever. According to new data from rent.com, the average price for a studio in our county is $2,378, up 21% from last year, and a one bedroom is up 18% to 2707, and that's the average. In Spring Valley, one bedroom apartments jumped 65%, and that's not even the biggest jump. In Encinitas, three bedroom apartments are up 82%. So what's behind the sudden spike? People realize that they can work from home, and so they are taking the opportunity to live where they've always wanted to live, to live in San Diego. Brittany says people moving here from other cities want to live near the coast, driving up prices. They are going up at the beach. But then people currently living near the beach get priced out and they move east, pushing up demand there too. And before you know it, prices all over the county are up sharply. There just aren't places to rent that are cheap anymore in San Diego. So no matter where you go, you're going to pay a, a semi premium unless you find an owner who's super generous. The other problem is that inflation is forcing a lot of homeowners associations and condos to raise their dues, which landlords traditionally pass on to tenants. And unfortunately for renters, it looks like things are gonna get worse before they get better. I don't see an end in sight. People are always gonna wanna live here. Without question, paradise at a price. Steve Price, CBS 8. All right, Steve, thanks. And even though rent prices are through the roof overall, there's good news in the city of San Diego for people who qualify for affordable housing. A new report from a nonprofit think tank says since 2016, the Affordable Homes Bonus Program has given a boost in production of both market rate and affordable homes. This program allows developers to build more homes on a property if they agree to dedicate a portion of it as affordable. Tonight we are learning about a new option soon opening in Oceanside for people who may have otherwise ended up in an emergency room or even in a jail cell. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held for the North Coastal Live Well Center, also known as a crisis stabilization unit. It's designed to help people experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis, but don't need to be admitted to a hospital or jail. The goal is to give instant care to people when they need it. The facility officially opens next Monday. Less than six hours and counting until the deadline to file your taxes. You have until midnight to submit those 2021 returns or request an extension. There's no penalty for filing late if you're owed a refund. The IRS encourages you to file electronically and to use direct deposit. Now, if you want a faster refund, but some of you are wondering, uh, I'm, excuse me, use the e-file and use your bank account direct deposit if you want it back quicker. But if you're wondering if filing an extension increases your chances of an audit, well, we have an answer to that. We're going to verify in our next half hour.